Right, okay, so um, I'm now going to do a video going on to the next part where we're looking at finding the shortest path through a network. And the algorithm that we work with for this is known as Dijkstra's algorithm, spelt D-I-J-K-S-T-R-A, okay? So Dijkstra's algorithm finds us a way of finding the shortest route from A to B. It could be on a map. Um, it would be the same kind of algorithm or one that would be similarly used um, as part of GPS. Okay, so it does have uses in real world applications. Now, the route that I'm going to be trying to follow is going from A to D. The labelling procedure for this differs depending on exam board. And um, for this exam board, for AQA, um, in that case it has a specific way that it wants you to write down what you're doing on the exam paper. Okay, so you need to follow this quite carefully and make sure you know how to do it. So, if we're going to start at A and we're going to try and get to D, then we start by writing zero and boxing it at A. Okay? So, what this effectively means is that I have so far travelled zero distance. I am at A, I've gone nowhere so far. Okay? And what I do is I then consider my possible routes out of A. So I could go to B, and that would be, let's say, four miles. It, this could be miles, this could be uh, the time it takes to get there. Okay, but let's go with miles. Four miles to get to B, and five miles to get to F. And I write these numbers at the vertices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, at this point, the shortest of the two, which is the four, and I box before, okay, to say, right, now I am considering where I'm at B, I'm considering 4, and then to get from B to any of the other vertices, I can either go to C or G. Well, to get to C would be an extra 3, so it would be 4 plus 3 would get me to 7. And then from B to G would get me an extra 5, so that's 4 and 5 would be 9 if I took that route. Okay. Now what Dijkstra's does here is that it then says, right, okay, um, that's all very well that I found this route from A to B and then to G or C, but I need to keep on considering the other possible routes as well, because A to F, this may yet still be part of the quickest route. So what I now consider is looking at all of the unboxed numbers that I have, 7, 9, and 5, and I choose the smallest of the three, which is currently 5. So I choose that one, I box it, and then I say to myself, right, okay, well 5, uh, to get from F to G would be an extra 6, so 5 and 6 would be 11. Now that isn't better than 9, so ignore the 11, don't bother writing it down, but from F to E would be an extra 4, so 5 and 4 would be 9. Okay, well that's, that's all right. Okay, then I'm saying to myself, right, okay, well, now I'm looking at the shortest one of each of these, the unboxed vertices, because I've exhausted all my routes out of F. So the shortest one of those is 7, so that's the one I pick. I say to myself, right, okay, well, I could go to G, 7 and 2 would be 9, but that's still not better than 9 I already have, so I don't bother writing anything down. And 7 plus 11 is 18. Okay. Then I say to myself, right, well, here I have two nines and an 18. Now, I could pick either one that I like, okay? So I could pick this one, for example. So I'm going to pick this one. So nine. Now, I could have nine and five. Now, nine and five would be 14, which would be better than 18. So I do a single line through the 18. Make sure it's only a single line. Don't rub it out. Don't cross it out. Okay, um, just put a single line through it, I put, right, 14, and 9 and 4 is 13, which isn't better than the 9 I already have there. 
Now the two on box is 9 and 14, so I pick the 9. 9 and 7 is 16, so don't bother choosing it. And finally, the least unboxed, the only one I've got left, is the 14, which I box. So I can see that the shortest distance from A to D is 14, but it hasn't necessarily given me the route. Now to find the route, you have to work backwards. So working backwards from D, okay, um, this was at 14, so 14 take away 11 isn't 7, so it wasn't that way. Sometimes this can be more confusing than other, um, than other examples. I could just like, spot it quite easily, but in the general case, if you had quite a large network, then working backwards, you just need to subtract the edge away to see if it would work. 14 take away 11 is not 7, so it couldn't have gone that way. 14 take away 5 is 9, so it would be going from D to G here. 14 take away 7 is not 9, so it wasn't that route. So I'm now at G. 9 uh, take away 2 could get me to 7, so that could be a route. Okay, But also, 9 to take away 5 is 4, so that was also a route. So I can see that there are already two routes coming from here. It could have been C or B next. 9 take away 6 is 3, that's not 5, and 9 take away 4 is 5, not 9. So from C, 7 take away 3 is 4, so uh, that would then have to go to B. Um, and then from B, both of these are going back to A. Okay. So there are actually two roots, both which are equal to 14. Okay, so make sure you write down the root after every time you do one of these problems. Now the good thing is, um, it doesn't just tell me the shortest distance from A to D. Oh, look, product placement. Um, it doesn't just tell me the shortest distance from A to D. It's also told me the shortest distance from A to B from A to C, from A to G, and from A to F, and from A to E. So it's told me the shortest distance from A to all of the other vertices. This is one of the payoffs and the extra bonuses, if you will, of Dijkstra's algorithm. It doesn't just show us the shortest distance from A to the one that you've been told to find. It tells you the shortest distance from A to all of the other vertices in the network. Okay. So I'm going to go through a few more examples of these in uh, the next few videos, um, just so you can get used to uh, the different situations that you can come across. But this is, can be done quite quickly once you've had that practice.